Hi, I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to talk about integration of radicals. Now, with radicals, it's, they're kind of a high-maintenance uh, kind of function, if you will, especially when it comes to integration. Now, depending on how complex the radical expression is, you may have to use other calculus tools like substitution uh, before being able to uh, integrate. But let's just start you off with a couple of simple things and uh, go from there. Now, oftentimes when it comes to radicals, you have to use the power rule here, the, the integral of x to the n dx, and this is if uh, n is not equal to negative 1. But uh, you want to use this fact, if you don't know it already, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. Now, where it becomes important is if you wanted to integrate, let's just say, square root of x. If you have the integral of square root of x, dx, any radical you always have to rewrite as an exponent no matter what. So this will be integral of x to the 1 half, dx. And we're, once you have it in, in exponent form, you want to use the rule that we just talked about. So you, it would be x to the 1 half plus 1 over 1 half plus 1 plus c. Now, 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves, so this would be x to the 3 halves over 3 halves plus c. And as you know, if you're divided by 3 halves, you're really multiplying by 2 thirds, so this would be 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. Now, you can do this also if you have cube roots, fourth roots, etc., but the bottom line is when you integrate using radicals, you pretty much will need to use the uh, power rule for integrals power rule for integrals at some point. So, I'm Jimmy Chang, and that's a brief introduction on the integration of radicals.